Um, yes, good afternoon. We're sitting here at um, Pietro's sister's guest house. Pretty nice guest house in Centurion. So if you want to have a place to stay in Centurion, contact South with Africa. <laughs> in South Africa, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> A uh, very good place to stay. Uh, last week we had an interview with Marcel um, about how the whole sales process works and aftermarket works and where Daniel stops and where Marcel is taking over. Um, and this week we're going to handle... Scuba gear and the pedal cycles. Scuba gear and pedal cycles. <laughs> The air compressor we've decided to put in the aft cockpit, the, the very last bench underneath it. Um, Leopard normally puts the life raft in there, but we, as you previously saw in previous episodes, we're not going to put the life raft there. So you're going to have the compressor underneath the bench, and then we're going to have our, we're going to have four diving cylinders that we're also going to place on brackets on the aft rail. So you're going to have your compressor, your cylinders everything together so it's going to be easier and convenient to keep up when you're on the sugar scoop because that, that I take it we're going to die from there most of the times. So on the compressor um, we're looking at electric compressors so they are very relatively quiet because the compressor side itself is having pistons but at least um, we don't have the diesel fumes or the petrol fumes and we don't need to carry fuel on board and it doesn't have that two-stroke engine that's making a <laughs> lot of noise. <laughs> So, um, me and Marcel is still looking at exactly how we're going to fit it in there and what else we can fit in there. And one thing that we need to look at for the cylinders is where, because we also have a braai, a barbecue there, and there's also a dinghy, a davit um, that's there. So, we must make just ensure that the dinghy is not all the time meeting the cylinders. So those are the things that we just need to, to look at and at this moment it looks like that's what we're going to do but in practice <laughs> we <laughs> found it's not always like that. Okay then we're going to get the normal, all the scuba gear that you need and we're going to try and source it from one supplier so if something goes wrong it's just one supplier you need to contact so at least if you have four DVDs then they're all the same make so there's always a standby. And then the um, spear fishing. Your fins, it's, it's very similar to your free diving fins. Obviously, you need to fin down far and, and quick. Um, and we've come across a guy, an Adam Freediver's guy. I've, I've got a couple of videos on, in the playlist for him where you get your three different types of fins you get your plastic, you get your fiberglass, and you get your carbon fiber. Your plastic fins, obviously the cheaper ones and the regular ones, and they work super well. But apparently there's a component in the plastic that has a, almost like a memory. So from all the finning, they tend to, to get that shape. They, they bend over and then they stay in that shape. So you lose forward thrusts eventually on those type of fins. With a fiberglass, it's a much sturdier fin so and it doesn't lose shape it just stays the same so whether you fin the whole time or not it, it, it'll just stay rigid the whole time and then the last one is carbon fiber which is obviously the, the Ferrari between the fins but cost wise if you look at your your fiberglass which is a very good option they're about two hundred dollars and then you're going to pay about a hundred and fifty extra for carbon fiber and that's going to do the same job so the carbon fiber, as if I understand it correctly from, from this guy, if the fin, if you bend the fin and it jumps back quickly, that is the same that's what will happen under the water. So that stored energy will, you, if you kick, that stored energy will actually be used to help and assist you to propel you. Mm. So the, the stiffer it is, um, the faster it, you can swim, but also you need then big leg muscles <laughs> like, like mine. And I think Pietro, <laughs> no, so there's a, there's a little bit of a, a problem that, we, that, that you need to match the, sniff, the stiffness, stiffness. Of, the, of, the, of the blade with the, the power of the stroke that you can give. 
Yeah, otherwise I will never be able to go <laughs> forward. <laughs> so, um, the next, I think the next one that we're looking at, um, I'm, a, I'm a dive instructor for, a uh, dive master for Nawi and for, for Paddy. Okay. And so for, from our side we would like to have the same kind of equipment like, like Peter was saying, for, for the same reasons that she was mentioning, but the masks, um, we will have the normal masks, which may be also four mm -hmm. if we dive in a big group, but you also, I think um, we saw the, we did, we do follow drench drenched so they have this full face uh, masks so another concern was the, the clearance if the thing is full full of water mask clearance or if it's fogging up so that came up quite a bit and apparently there's not a problem at all and yet I think drench can confirm maybe um, apparently it's just a purge button that you press and a couple of seconds and your mask is cleared so I don't think that's a concern then one of my big favorites why I go diving is that women cannot talk. So <laughs> they don't back chat you, it's quiet. That was also a concern raised about that one. Now there's a lot of concerns. One of the reasons we want to have the full face masks is to be able to communicate. And when we do videoing and everything for, for your pleasure, we obviously need to talk. So that aspect, so when we're going to go filming underwater, we will definitely make use of an um, integrated communication system. And then we can talk. But if you don't want to talk, you just don't talk. <laughs> so, so, so you're not forced to talk. Can I switch it off? <laughs> you can, you, before the dive, you can decide. Do you want to talk on this dive or don't you? Oh. If you don't want to talk, so I cannot switch it off. You don't screw it in. You just don't leave so it So if off. I screw it off, I will start drowning. <laughs> so I will just. But there is a plug that you put in. If you don't use that, you just plug that hole. You plug the hole. You don't have to talk. <laughs> Another one is. As a, as a dive master, mm -hmm. I, uh, when I'm instructing the students, I can see they fit a little lot with a lot of straps. So, how, if I look at that mask, there's like a million straps at the back. There's a lot of straps. And in the playlist, again, I've got a couple of videos there where they actually demonstrate how to put it on. It seems quite intricate at the beginning, but everybody said you get the hang of it within a couple of times. You get the hang of it, so it's quick and easy. It's going to take you the same time to put the mask on. But the other benefit of all the straps as well is nobody's going to kick this mask off your face. So it's there That's to stay it. throughout the dive. So you don't need to retrieve mask retrieval because it's stuck on your face. <laughs> Definitely. And in a fogging, you did not answer a question in the beginning about the fogging up. The fogging. There's absolutely, apparently, zip fogging. Again, drenched. If you can leave a comment if, you, if you're watching, there's absolutely no fogging on the full face mask so that is a brilliant brilliant plus just another huge benefit apparently you've got a 180 degree vision you're not restricted with a normal mask so you can see all over just about all over so i think it's a pretty that's a pretty nice feature to have as well okay so the next thing that we're looking at is the foldable, foldable bikes right in the bike industry, and it's, it's also because of the lithium batteries, um, we can start seeing now also a big change, a revolution happening in the bike industry. And that is the, they put the electrical motor onto the bicycle, and you can even have mountain bikes that help you going up a hill and so on. So they are awesome, these electrical motors. I still want to change my Yanmar <laughs> engines for electrical motors. But that's a different topic. Um, so you get three types basically from these things. So the first one is you just pedal. There's nothing and there's no assist, nothing like that. Then there's another one that is a pedal, I call it pedal assist. Where when you, when you start cycling, then this one just kicks in and as you cycle harder, it will, it will also assist harder. It will not take over. The moment you stop pedaling, it, it will stop. Um, but the moment you start pedaling, and of course, there's a safety factor, you must be over a certain speed, blah, 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 all of that. Then there's one that is not a pedal assist, but like a little scooter, if you want to see it like that. Where you also need to start pedaling, because it, the safety thing is that you need to get uh, above a certain speed. Then you can press the button, and it will kind of like activate, and then you, like a jet ski, and you can just go. Um, so that is one uh, the three different ones and it's also available in the foldable bikes as well so the big thing about foldable bikes oh 
Yeah, and, and <laughs> since this, I think um, <laughs> me and Petru need to do more of the pedaling. So we're actually only looking at the pedaling side. So that's most probably <laughs> the only one that we will not do too much luxury um, because we need some, some exercise. And if we do uh, go buy groceries or stuff like that, no green stuff. But if we do buy groceries like beers, yeah, that is <laughs> that's a good meal. We can we can then go with the bikes. Um, but you you've done a couple of things on the foldable bikes. Um, a couple of things that I realized, or what a person should be looking at, I think, looking at a foldable bike, especially on confined spaces on the boat, is um, one of the main things is weight. You need to carry this thing around wherever you go. Um, or, or lifting on and off the boat into the dinghy and from the dinghy onto shore if you're in a shopping center or wherever you need to carry it around if you're not allowed to cycle there so weight is one of the big factors the other thing to look at is the size it folds up to so we've got lockers and stuff that, that we've sort of kind of have an idea where we're going to put it but it, that's obviously the smaller it can fold the much the, the better then there's other little things as well when it folds down how quickly does it fold down do you need tools to, to dismantle it, to fold it down? Does the handlebars fold away? Does the, the pedals fold away? Those are a couple of things. Oh, and another big thing as well, does it stand on its own once it's folded? Otherwise, you're going to fold it, it's going to fall over, and the possibility of breakages is obviously big then. So those are pretty much the, the couple of pointers. Oh, another, another fancy thing that I bumped into as well. Does it stay together? Um, I think it's the Dahon cycle. They've got two little magnets. So they actually, they stick together with a magnet, the two wheels. And then the whole thing just stays together and it stands up straight, which I thought was pretty awesome. And what about the weight? I mean, I, I, I'm worried that there's this little thingy in between. Uh, <laughs> and the, moment, the weak spot. The weak spot. <laughs> and if I go there, it breaks into two or something like that. Will that so I, I guess you will get to the waiting very, very, very soon. Um, what brands are we looking at at this moment? Yeah, I did research on Brompton, Dahon and Giant. And when I just look at all three brands, they basically all have the features that we're looking at. And they more or less all have the same features. What, what I did discover price-wise, um, they all do about the same thing. They have the same features, but the, your price difference comes in the type of frame that you get. It's going to be a steel frame, a carbon frame, aluminium frame. And then your, your brake system apparently has a huge impact on the, on the price as well. And then the gears as well. But I think that is catering more towards serious cyclists. It's, for our purposes, we need entry level, basic stuff with a couple of gears. So we're not going to go for the most expensive in those ranges. But they all weigh in the region of about 11 to 12 and a half kilos. Um, they all, they basically all one size fits all. Because the, the seats can, can adjust and the steering can adjust, all that can adjust. Then they come in a 20 inch wheel, which is also very much a pretty average. They all have like that one fold system where there's no tools involved, so it's just a flick of a bracket or so whatever. So that that mechanism will it hold my weight? It, it weighs. Your your carrying weight. They all shut off on around 110 kgs. Ouch! So we need to cycle before we start cycling that. That's that's another reason why we're not going to put any engines on any of these bikes or any motors. We're going to pedal them <laughs> <laughs> to try and get that down. Okay. Um, yeah. So and. Uh, that's more or less all the features that we were looking at. They all come in, in all three brands. So we're happy with that one. So if we now go for groceries and the weight limit is like 105 and I want to buy, and I'm already 109, 107 kilograms, I'm not pounds or stone or something. <laughs> so that thing is 105. My six pack is going to uh, how are we going to how are we going to do this grocery thing? Oh, are you going to pedal with all the groceries? Okay, oh, brilliant. I'm going to show it on the screen as well. You get a foldable trolley, which is super super awesome. Oh, I cannot it get away from. Packs, it folds down like the bike, and it carries because a lot of the. the who's the going yachts? to have that thing at the back? No, most probably me. 
<laughs> I think we might have two. <laughs> oh, well, nice. Okay. Because um, I see a lot of yatis go for drag bags, and this trolley actually takes more than a drag bag. But and you can carry, you can drag it by hand as well. So when we don't go cycling, we can actually use this trolley as well. But check out, I'm going to put it on the screen. It's an awesome little thing. Okay. So I think that basically covers the the, the transport mode. On land. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Better that way. So next week we're going to handle the maybe the spares and the repair toolkits. So on the spares and the two, me and Marcel had a long discussion, and there's as longer as the discussion really goes, long the longer this list is getting. Um, I think yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Uh, yeah, go to our Facebook, do the Facebook thing, just enjoy yourself. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.